It's good to see you all. Uh, we're happy we can be together today as well. Uh, it's it's February 23rd on Thursday. This is week seven, day two of our class. And let's hop right in. So welcome back. Um, tomorrow, just a quick announcement. We'll be continuing our Friday dialect series. Uh, for tomorrow, we have invited uh, Judy Ramos and Kai Montour of Yakdat to share a recording and um, anything else they'd like to share about the way Shinget is spoken in the Yakutat area. Um, so we're looking forward to, to having them in class tomorrow. If you can make it, it'll be same time, same Zoom link, 12 to 1. For today, we'll open up with discussion and then continue our uh, work with Lingit Enachsa. On Tuesday, we started going through the first chapter in the beginning of the book on the greetings and phrases, pronouncing them, and having a discussion about when and how to use those phrases so that we're also incorporating culture, respect, and making sure we're, we're using them in a polite way. And if we have time after that, we'll do a dialogue, make a short dialogue using the phrase book. And we'll play it out and see how our time works out today. Um, and then we'll do dialogue review and breakout rooms as per usual so that you can have time to work with each other on your pronunciation and um, build confidence and comfort with the dialogues. So before we hop into Shinget Einachsa, were there any questions or comments from class so far, uh, Tuesday, anything we've covered? If not, we'll continue right through. So Shinget Einachsa, as we know, means say it in Shinget. This is the phrase book that was compiled by the Downhowers and published by Sealaska Heritage Institute. And I'll put the link in the chat so that you can open it up on your computer and it's available to you immediately. And then we'll jump right in. So this is our first chapter, and it's the chapter is called Greetings, Departures, and Visiting. So on Tuesday, we covered all of page nine basic greetings. A lot of them we've seen in our dialogue and we're familiar with. Wasa'i um, how hat good, and So we made it through page nine, and then we just started on page 10. I'm going to zoom in because I know this might be small on your screens. And so I think we left off with and to recap for when you're offering someone a chair, we talked about everyone go ahead and repeat after me uh, for here's is a chair. Ya do kai ka jit. Ya do kai ka jit. Jit. Okay. And then since kai ka jit is kind of a long word, mm -hmm. if you find yourself uh, stumbling at all toward the end, one thing I like to do as a learner is start from the end of the word. So starting from this underline, ji ka, everyone say ka. Ka. Ga. Ka. Ah. Ah. Yeah. yeah, and then go ahead and from Gase Kajate. Kajate. And then the whole word Kaya Kaya Kajate. Kaya Kaya Kajate. 
And then the whole phrase, Ya du kaya kajit. Ya du kaya kajit. Kaya kajit. Kajit. Okay, so how do we sound on that one, Chakasani Kik? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So then the next phrase, we had a discussion about this one because if you want to say there is a chair, um, spatially it's a little farther away from you. So instead of ya du, you would say we du. So everyone repeat after me. We du kai ka We du kai ka And then we had a discussion where Shaksani Kik shared with us if you do have... Uh, a situation where you're pointing a chair at somebody else, it's polite to also add something so that they don't mis misinterpret what you're saying to me and we don't want you to sit with us. So a couple of phrases we added, um, I'll just add them to our slides. So here we have way the kayakajate. And then you could add if you want to add, oh, you could bring it over here. That there's a chair over there, but you can bring it closer to sit with us. Um, you would say this line hot sati. So go ahead and repeat after me. Hot sati. Uh, hot sati. Yeah, and then we were really pleased. One of our students asked, could you even make it more polite by adding kusha and um oops so let's do that one this line hot city kusha okay are there any questions on those what what is what where is that sentence in here it would be this one, and I'll zoom in. Um, you see this one, that's uh, the fourth fourth sentence? Yeah. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. OK, OK. OK. So I'm going to add this one to our slides and then um so moving on to our next phrases our next one we're talking about money here's two dollars is the english meaning and in slinga you can repeat after me ya du dich dana ya du dich dana mm -hmm. One more time. Ya du dech dana. Ya du dech dana. These next ones we know are just yes and no. Uh, repeat after me. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, and click. Click. <clears throat> okay. And that's good to say that's good. Yikewa. Okay. Next one. For if something is really amazing, you can say Sikudze. To to show sympathy or empathy, um, we practice this one in our dialogue after we said Wasa Yiti Ish, how's your dad? And then Arthritis, do you? He has arthritis. The response is repeat after me. Ishan. 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 Uh, this one, they, the translation is interesting. So everyone just repeat this phrase and Shakasani Kik, let us know how we sound. Do. 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 <laughs> when would we say? When would we say that, Aksani Kik? It's funny when you and I were searching for uh, Nora Downhower and uh, 
I was it uh, Demert? It was Demert what? talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nora said, uh, now we can speak in our language. And oh, uh, Demert says, oh, yeah, OK, that's good. It got quiet, and then she said, I I forgot how to talk and crank it. And that's when Nora said, do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so like, uh, um, I, I used to hear it when I was, I was a kid, but the voice used to go up on the end, do. And uh, that's when you, you're doing something or saying something wrong. And, uh, uh, it's it's kind of a teasing kind of thing. It's not like, uh, I think the book says, see how you are. Yeah. I, uh, it's kind of an OK explanation, but it's, uh, kind of, uh, it's used mainly with people you're familiar with. I guess that's what I want to say. Yeah. Your, your children, your grandchildren. And can even say it to the cat. Okay. Do. And, <laughs> um, like, uh, I'm trying to work on something as a kid and I mess it up. And uh, my mom's uh, trying to tell me how to work it there. I can't do it. She keep doing it wrong to do <laughs> like this. Yeah. yeah. So um, so when you use it, uh, I make sure it's like somebody you're familiar with and you know well. And uh, it's like uh, uh, when Nora said do to um, to Ruth Demert, it was in a teasing way. Uh -huh. Ruth said, "I forgot clink it." Yeah. <laughs> so, I said, so I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I went in a circle on that one. So, if, if you have any questions, uh, you might uh, let me know and see if I come up with something better. Okay, I love it. I thought that was really good um, context. Yeah. Does anyone have questions on that? On do or do? Um, the conversation we were talking about for everyone's reference is in Rene's YouTube under his fluent, fluent speakers playlist. There's a co recorded conversation of Nora and Dr. Ruth Demert. It's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, the, I think when they're going to record them, they just kind of leave it open. You can talk about anything you want, and, and they weren't prepared. So uh, they started off with teasing each other. Yeah. I forget what she said, something like um, a H show a hick or something like that. Yeah, she, she said, uh, I don't know what to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was cute. It was fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> so they ended up teasing each other. And that's where it's commonly used with close friends and uh, uh, with children, uh, grandchildren. Yeah. Next one as well, I think we'll need explanations on when we can use these. So there's one for go away, shoe, and scram. And a uh, class you can repeat after me, chuk. 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 And then the other one, juk. Chuk. 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 
and then there's like to add emphasis uh jukde 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 so shock sunny kick when can we use these phrases uh what did one of the speakers say that uh, we say, you say uh, chuk and we say juk? But I've heard both uh. when I was uh, growing up. And, and uh, it's used um, mainly for uh, pets, pets to learn, learn to speak going to. So. Uh. Can use it for pets or children, uh, but I, I've never heard it used for adult to adult. Uh, but uh, chuk is, is more common than juk, but I, I heard both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, dog that keeps uh, pestering you and you say chook, you know, and uh, it, they do learn. <laughs> they do learn yeah. Through you while you're busy trying to visit or talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, same thing. Okay. Um, I see some hands up, Oscar Tiksha. This is so funny because it finally makes sense to me because my husband has this war with the squirrels around our bird feeder and he's <laughs> always throwing pebbles at it going chunk chunk and I'm always like I didn't I mean I knew it was clinking but I now I see what he's yeah I've heard this a lot at the squirrels he he hates the squirrels yeah <laughs> so just... they're, they're learning quick at them I've heard this so much as a kid that I didn't even know it was Klinget for the longest time from my great grandma. <laughs> I just thought it was English. And so like my husband finally asked me, he's like, what do you, what is that? Like, that just means go away. Isn't that English? But for, <laughs> so inland here, joke, and it, it gets used a lot for kids too, apparently. I've heard a lot as a kid. When you, when you add de, it's, uh, uh, you're getting kind of, uh, tired of saying it now so I really mean it you know took that uh, um, if you have to say it several times in a row so then you add the death to to emphasize and say I'm getting tired of saying this uh, <laughs> yeah. I love that uh good cheese for sharing that's so funny about the squirrels my dad has this exact same battle going on with the squirrels and the bird feeder and like he's allies with the birds and <laughs> it's a whole thing yeah. yeah yeah in boston in our old house where we're, we had an office in for the natives uh, the squirrels moved into the attic. They really moved in, and they and they chew. They chew the gnaw on wood the same way rats do. And you can hear it, you know, from working. Mm. And uh, I heard it, and I thought, "What is that? Is that rats? Is it no? It's squirrels." So. The women's uh, study was upstairs, and uh, so the fumigator came and uh, tried to get rid of them. And and the lady, I was sitting in the office answering phones, and the lady came in and she said, uh, "Did you call the fumigator?" And I said, "No, I didn't." And she said. Well, they're here trying to get rid of the squirrels. Uh, I said, they're asking an Indian if they want to get rid of animals. <laughs> <laughs> Act out on that one. Uh, it turned out that 
we had an old tree uh, that was close to the to the building, mm. and they got rid of the tree because it was uh, falling down, and that got rid of the squirrels in the attic. Oh, because they couldn't climb up to it. Yeah, <sighs> they couldn't climb up the side of the building. Yeah. Huh. Squirrels. <sighs> okay, so the next ones. Um, I don't know about these. I hear them sometimes. I just don't have the like knowledge, I guess, yet to, or comfort to use them. But I do want to learn them. So okay. Next one for the translation says too much or also wow gee whiz uh repeat after me hadla hadla or dla dla yeah Aksani Kik, do you use these ones? Yeah, yeah, we used to use it a lot when I uh, um, I think Paul Marx, you know, can uh, can do a real good comment on that because he uh, uh, we were talking about uh, I was doing a class on how to make uh, uh, blankets and there was a question about how many rows of buttons can I use. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said, you can have as many buttons as you want if you have the money to get it. Because they thought it meant like uh, the more important you are or status or something. Uh. I was like, yeah, it shows the status of your money, your pocket money. <laughs> and then Paul Marx uh, piped up and said, after three rows, it's hot la. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was, I thought it was really a fitting uh, comment uh, because after that, you're just really showing off too much. <laughs> uh, somebody goes on and on about themselves or anything, or uh, saying, something that they boasting or whatever, uh, you can tease them by saying, <laughs> um, that's too so, much. Is that real? That's too much, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Gonna tease. Yeah. I love that story. That's funny. Uh, Skinyata. Okay, Satini. I'm just gonna try something here, just because it feels right. Wasa do a socket. Ah, singit enach squirrel. Wasa. Wasa do a sock. Yet ah. Klingit enach squirrel. Kanatsakaga? No, I thought Kanatsak was a porcupine. Ah, Gothie. Ichodian, ah, I like Achka. Oh, I like Achka. That's a big name for a small animal. Yeah, oh, uh. Are you looking it up? Ah. Uh, let's look in the dictionary. So, squirrel. Okay, we're going to find some options here. It looks like it shows up 10 times in the dictionary. So, one is a much shorter name, Tsalk. And uh, Yuhan, go ahead and repeat after me. Tsalk. Tsalk. 
Uh, that looks like squirrel or gopher or arctic ground squirrel. So I'm going uh, to include all these. Um, what else do we have? What is this one? Oh, that's mushroom. Um, flying squirrel. Uh, we have a longer name and it's Katsakua. Where so, do they, where do they have flying squirrels? I don't. Katsakua. Does anyone here have flying squirrels near their homes? Like. Um, okay. Like. Like. Let's keep looking. Uh, there's one for like a red squirrel. I think this is what we have near my home. And this one, y'all can repeat after me. Kaltak. Uh, so that's a pinched S and then a high tone double A K. So let's do it again. Kaltak. Um, I'm going to add this one to our list and let's keep looking too. And then there's one that says Kandalsak. Have you heard that one before, Shaksani? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oops. Okay. Hey. So um, yeah, that was uh -huh. in the West Coast. Uh, the squirrel, uh, squirrels around here go. In the West Coast, they chirp. I mean, in the East Coast, uh, Boston, they chirp. Oh, so, uh, I saw a squirrel and I went, he stopped to listen, like, hmm, I heard that before somewhere. <laughs> uh, he actually stopped to listen, but I didn't recognize it as a squirrel talk. Oh, wow. It's the same, but they are, they chirp instead of uh, what I do with the ones in the West. Uh, <clears throat> I love that. Gonna stock is the one I, I knew. I knew was the right word. Gonna stock egg I love your squirrel call. That's a fun. So maybe in the East Coast he recognized it, but they talk different over there now. Yeah, yeah different language. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, dialect. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Boston dialect. Boston dialect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, so we did Hadla and La. And then uh, going back to our phrase book. If you want to ask somebody more, uh, repeat after me. Suk. 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 Is this if we're if we're offering more or asking for more? Asking for more. Oh. Two. Two, two, okay. Two. Okay, so this is what we're asking for more. Uh, 
Okay. You could uh, use it as offering uh, as a true uh, Do you want more tuksha? Tuksha. Tuksha. Uh. Yeah. Make sure it's a question. Let me see. Okay. Tuksha. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Tuksha. Tuksha. Uh, if it's like you invite people for uh, a meal or they uh, join you uh, and uh, it, it looks like their tea is running out, you can offer more. Or, or if they want more of the dinner that you gave them. So. Okay. That's a good sign, right? If they want more. <laughs> yeah, it's easy for kids to say. Tuk. Tuk. Tuksha. Sometimes at the language nest, we would when we offered the kids more food, we would say tsukukei tawasigu. Would you say that one, Shaksani uh, Yeah. Maybe more natural to. Yeah, that, that's a good phrase. Uh huh. Okay, so we did Zook and then now next line is that's all, that's enough. And so repeat after me. Deowa. 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 This is like if we want someone to stop a behavior. Yeah. That's yeah. one one thing. Yeah. Or if if you ask somebody you want more, they could say, uh, they are where I'm uh, done. They are where. Okay. When I've changed, they are where. Okay. If you could just add that uh, I'm too full, I can. <clears throat> Something. Okay. Yeah. Always be polite as, as you can. Uh. Okay. So if someone asks, they could say, Gunas chi shte awa. Any questions on that from the class? Or if the Kids are arguing, you could say, tell them to stop pressing down. Okay. Okay. Okay, next one means it's all gone uh, and it's hooch. 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 Hooch awa. Yeah, you could also, yeah, say hooch awa. Hooch awa. Hooch awa. And then there's a variation that says hooch. 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 And next one is let me see or think. Um, I think I've heard this where if someone, you, someone asks you a question, they need to think about it. They just say, shke. 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 
for something that's cute or tiny. Uh, usk. 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 Or a variation. Usk. Or usk. Usk. Go back to usk. Ah. Let me think. It's like a. Uh, somebody asks you something and you know it, but you have to stop and think about it and say, okay, uh, I heard that before and I, you know, uh, let me think about it or let me see. Uh, I think it's used a lot for uh, let me see. Uh, how do you... Uh, Put this together. Okay. Okay. Let me see or let me think about it. Okay. In my classroom, I used to have a, a box called okay. <laughs> so they could draw out of out of the box. Uh, a phrase that they can use and uh, ask about, talk about. Hmm. That was my think box. Oh, cool. Okay. This was fun. Okay, so we're at 20 minutes till. Should we do breakout rooms so folks have time to practice? Yeah. Okay, so let's switch gears here. Really good discussion today. And for our dialogue review, uh, we'll demonstrate it for you and then let you break off into your breakout rooms. Yeah. Knock, knock. I do so well. Nila Toga, aya. Nesko. How? Hatki hatin. Ah, Tatke hat kuhwa tin. Yes, you can see cool thing it. Ah, skunk hadus too. Wasa yati. Peshwasa. What Arthritis, do you want? Ah. Hey. So I will put this link in the chat for folks so that you all can practice. And do we have any questions before we go into our breakout rooms? Okay, let me put these in the chat. Okay. Okay, link is in the chat for these slides. Uh, you can scroll down to the, the section for dialogue review and that way it's available to you when you go into your breakout rooms. And we'll go ahead and do groups up to five. We have 14 people, so that'd be good. We'll go for actually maybe 15 minutes just so we have time to come back together. And you can work on the knock knock dialogue. Uh, if you have more time than that, can do self introduction. Otherwise, we'll focus on it next week. Uh, um, it muted you and it mutes everybody when we come back. Um, is Alan able to unmute you if you have anything you wanted to add?
Quick check in. How did that go for everybody? Two thumbs up. Make A. One thumb up. Baby's participating. I love it. Can you hear me now? Ah, I saw to ah. No. Yeah, in the room that I was in, uh, there was a first time person. She did really good. She said she had been in other classes, just read through a little bit of struggle, but it was it was really pretty good. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. One thing we worked on in our breakout room was if there's a phrase that's kind of tripping us up, we'll practice it and then we'll just do it a few times in a row till it becomes kind of autopilot or normal. Anyone else had any tips or tricks from their rooms? That baby's cheeks are too cute. I can't. Okay, um, <laughs> so cute. I see a comment in the chat I want to bring up. I still struggle with the pinched X outside of our dialogue. Okay, we'll work on that in our upcoming classes. Um, and we're at time, so have a good rest of your day. Okay. Uh,